the Traveling Pint, and today's segment about Think Beer is taking place at Steel Wheel Brewery on Powerline Road, just outside of Brantford. And we are today in their hop yard because we're going to talk about hops. Hops is one of the main ingredients in beer, and it's used for both aroma and bittering. Depending on which quality that you want is how the brewer selects the hops for the beer. Some of the profiles you might get are citrus, floral, grassy, piney, resiny, herbal. And there's quite a variety that you can choose from. These are fascinating plants, so I'm super excited to be here today standing in their hop yard. And it's actually harvesting, so tomorrow they're going to be harvesting these all down. They're going to be drying them, and they're going to be putting them into pellet form to be making glorious beer out of. You can see that they're almost 18 to 20 feet high, and that's actually how high hop plants grow. The vine circles up the trellises that they've created here, and it takes two to three years for these plants to reach maturity. So it's a long commitment when you're starting to grow hops. You don't just plant them in the first year, have these beautiful cones to make beer out of. It's actually quite the process, and it takes you two to three years to be able to create beer out of these hops. When they're in their prime, they're growing a foot a day. So it's super cool when you can look up those shots kind of online and find people that have done time lapses of hops, and you'll actually see them coiling up a foot a day. So it's amazing, the timing. You wake up in the morning and it's like they've already grown taller than you are, which is pretty cool. Hops need a certain climate to grow in, and we're kind of fortunate to be in the area that we are in Canada to have these around us. So they need a certain latitude that they grow better on, and they need a dormant season. So these are actually chopped down uh, near between August and September, and they need that winter to be dormant, and then they start to grow again in the spring. So it does grow better in certain parts of the world, uh, Germany, U.S., and Canada, along that certain latitude. They grow very, very well. When hops were first started to be used in beer, they were kind of a natural preservative. So it was allowing the beer to travel across the country to other places without going bad. And it was making the beer have an extended life. Generally what you might see if you go to a brewery and have a look is you're going to see the pellet forms. So this is the way the hop cones start. When these are harvested, you can make a fresh hop beer or a wet hop beer, as it's also known, where you actually use the flowers as is. That's very, very time sensitive as well. So as you harvest them, within 48 hours, you must use those fresh hops in that beer. So generally what people do is they will harvest the hops, they'll put them through their dryer and do all the process on the, on the end, and then they'll turn them into a pellet form. So that lasts a lot longer. So they'll vacuum seal them, they'll keep them safe from light because you don't want them to be oxidized or um, changed by the light or the, the oxygen. So pellet form is way more popular to be used throughout breweries across the world right now. Hops are also good for you. In 2007, they were the medicinal plant of the year. They're known to help with sleep, besides having too many beers. They're known for helping with milk production. They're known for having anti-inflammatory properties, as well as antioxidant. So there's many good benefits to drinking beer and hops. So the hops have both alpha and beta acids in them, and depending how high those are, they're either used for aroma or bittering when you're brewing beer. The bittering hops are thrown into the boil, and they're going to be in there as they dissolve. When you're using them for more aroma, they're actually going in after fermentation, or near the end of fermentation, which is called dry hopping. So you're going to get a little bit extra aroma off of your beer. You'll notice when the flavor of hops are citrusy, bitter, grassy, floral, tea-like, the aromas can be very similar to that. But you could also maybe get a different taste than you do have a smell, depending on how they're used. So brewers do their research very well on understanding what kind of beer they want and what kind of profiles they want to add to that. If they really want a juicy, juicy IPA, they're going to use more of the C branded hops like Cascade, Citra, and Chinook. It's pretty exciting um, how they can do that. And there's also lots of breeding programs. So they're now constantly making a lot of different various types of hops. There's something like over 100, I think, now that you can find. Obviously, there's ones that are more used regularly than other kinds, but they're making more and more. So there's cross-breeding programs where they actually are breeding hops to create new ones that have a certain characteristic to it that a brewer might be looking for in their beer. So here at Steel Wheel, they've got eight varieties of hops on the premises, and their brewery is coming soon, early 2018. Uh, it's quite exciting because they'll be actually using all the hops that they harvest this year, putting them into pellet form and using them in the beers that they are brewing on site. It's a lot of work to run a hop yard. This is about you know, maybe a couple acres in size. And when they first start these plants, you have to almost train them. So as they start to grow up, they kind of want to go 
in any direction. So you have to take the plant and start to train it to go up to the twine, up to the top of these giant trellises. And they all go in a clockwise direction. So if you'll look around, you can see that these ones are all growing clockwise around the twine all the way up. So as mentioned, it's harvesting time. So tomorrow is gonna be a very busy day on the farm. So I have Cindy in here to tell us a little bit about this machine behind us and what the harvest all entails. Hi, so what happens is we'll have to go back to the hop yard and we will cut every one of the binds off and they get cut off at the bottom and the top and we have to bring them to a central location, uh, which is here at the harvester in order to get the hop cones off of the vines themselves. Um, so we're gonna gather up the same varieties, put them on a big trailer, bring them here, and then we'll feed them through this machine. So this machine rotates and the little fingers inside the machine pick the hop cones off and then they all go into a bin. We want to keep the varieties separate, so then once we finish one variety, we're going to take those bins and we're going to put them in our dryer. So we have a hop dryer that we would dry the hops right away, and that probably will take about 20 hours at about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we will uh, take those hops very quickly and get them pelletized because brewers like them in a pellet form, and then they get vacuum sealed in a mylar bag that's nitrogen bathed so that they don't get exposed to the oxygen because the oxygen de degrades the hops. It's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> you guys put in a lot of work here, so it's very impressive to see. It is a very labor intensive kind of occupation because everything is manual. You string it manually, the hop yard, you harvest manually. I mean, this is about as much automation as we get is the harvester. And wow. then after that, it's still manual processes. So we want to make sure as we're harvesting the hops that we pick, you know, the leaves out because you don't want a lot of litter in your hops because you really need a good product to provide to the brewers and to brew with. So no visit to a brewery is complete without beer, of course. So I would love for Harold to share with us what we're drinking today by Steel Wheel. We have a sample of an East Coast IPA today. It's a uh, big hop profile, not overly bitter, and a very juicy, grapefruity kind of taste. Of course, made with Ontario hops. <laughs> Cheers. 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 delicious. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to have a little taste of this, so I appreciate you sharing with me today. Again, I'd like to thank Steel Wheel for letting us into their brewery today. And next time you guys crack a beer, I want you to think about where the hops have come from. Cheers. 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 Tuesday at 7. Chef D takes you from the farm to the table with delicious meals made from locally sourced ingredients.